Hello, Fi-Sci fam. We are starting off our physics, and we got to introduce motion, of course. A lot of this is just going to be common sense to you, but we want to make sure we lay down a good ground foundation to understand everything that's going to be going on with motion and something we call kinematics. Let go. Distance is something we'll refer to a lot, and as you already know, it's how much ground you actually covered. So if you started at point A and went around in a circle, we're fully aware that 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8 would give you 12 and 12, which would give you a total distance of 24 meters. It's just how far you went. Let's keep that in mind and move forward. If a teacher takes a walk here, they walk 4 meters east, 2 meters south, 4 meters west, 2 meters north. They do a full circle, but they end up getting a total distance of 12 meters. Something to keep in mind, 12 meters, meters is the proper units for distance. And we often designate distance as the letter D. Two things that are used interchangeably awesome in everyday life that actually aren't completely the same are speed and velocity. In this class, we'll be using speed for the most part, and that's how fast an object is actually moving. Uh, if you're moving fast, you have high speed. If you're moving slow, you have low speed. If you're not moving at all, you have zero speed. But velocity, which is something that people use interchangeably, is technically different. In actual physics, velocity is what we call a vector quantity, and it has a direction associated with it. So it's kind of like speed, but with a direction. There's a little more to it, but we're not going to get into it too much in this class, but it has something to do with the difference between distance and displacement. But for the most part, for this class, knowing that velocity is just speed with a direction is pretty good for what we're going to be doing. In examples, if you're traveling down LaGrange Road and you're going about 30 miles per hour, that would be your speed. Now, say you're going 30 miles per hour south on LaGrange, that would be velocity because you had a speed with a direction associated with it. Again, there's more to it, but for this part, we're just going to focus on that and we'll be sticking with speed for the most part. To find our speed, or average speed, we like to say the overall average speed, we take the total distance traveled divided by the time it took. Keep in mind our units here, distance is in meters, time is in seconds, so that means when we find speed, it's in the units of meters per second. Again, notice speed is S. D is distance, and T is time. That's easy to remember. But we are going to be using the equation speed equals distance over time quite a bit in this classroom. If we want to do some practice problems with speed, let's take a look and say you have a speedboat that you own, and it goes a total of 500 meters. Well, meters is distance, so I have a distance. And you go for 20 seconds. 20 seconds is a time. We want to know what the average speed is, so we are looking for speed. Lucky for us, we know that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if I took that and did S is equal to D, which is 500, divided by 20, I would end up finding that my speed is 25, and since it's distance divided by time, it would be meters per second. So my overall speed would be 25 meters per second. If we did a new problem where we had a speedboat and we know that it's traveling at 15 meters per second, we know that that would be information of a speed, 15 meters per second. We also know that it's going for 35 seconds, so that is the time, 35 seconds. And we want to know the total distance traveled, so we're looking for distance. Lucky for us, we know that the equation for speed is distance divided by time. If I set that up, my speed is 15, my distance, I don't know, so I leave it as D, and my time is 35 seconds. To solve for that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 35 so that I could get D by itself. 35 times 15. Whoops. If I calculate the math on that, 35 times 15 is going to be 525 is equal to the distance. Now, what are my units for distance? Oh, yes, they're in meters. 
So after 35 seconds, this boat went 525 meters. A speedboat that you own travels 15 meters per second and travels 700 meters total. Well, here's some information. They gave us a speed, again, is 15 meters per second. It says that we traveled 700 meters, that's my distance. And they wanna know what is the total time then if you went that far that you traveled. Well, we know that speed is distance over time. So if we set up the equation over here, it would be 15 is equal to 700 divided by t. Now solving for this throws some people off. You are solving for t, but remember t is in the denominator. So we have to get it up top in the numerator. So we're gonna multiply both sides by t. Why? So that we can end up getting it in the numerator so that the math becomes a lot more straightforward. Now that I have t in the numerator, I can divide both sides by 15 so that t becomes by itself. When I punch that in my calculator, I end up getting about 46.6 for my answer. Since I'm looking at time, my answer would be in seconds. And it's as easy as that. All right. Thanks for listening. Simple way to start off the physics unit. But anyways, speed is all about motion and movement. Eventually, this will be very important to lead into acceleration. And technically, accelerations involve velocity, so we'll have to include the direction. But thanks for listening. Good luck. And if you have any questions, ask in class.